Hey guys, Mountain Hunter with another scope review for you guys. This time we've got the SIG Whiskey 5 product number Sierra Oscar Whiskey 53014. It's a 3 to 15 by 52 second focal plane black 30 millimeter main tube with the level plex option with the Hellfire triplex reticle. Get a good look at it. Pretty big piece of glass. Okay, so I'm gonna go over what I really liked about this scope. Um, the first thing you notice, the glass is very good. Very, very good. Um, it's really clear, edge-to-edge -edge clarity, uh, no matter what power you're on, 3 or 15, um, the resolution is, is very, very good. Right on par with the, with the SHV. Um, can't, really, can't really even tell a difference between the two. Um, the illuminated dot, the illuminated Hellfire dot, it's a very, very fine LED. It doesn't have any blooming. Um, it's very fine. I think there's 10 or 11 intensity settings. <clears throat> so you can turn it down or you can turn it all the way up to where it's pretty much daylight bright. So very, very nice, very, very fine aiming point for the dot. Um, comes with a very nice scope coat. Just really helpful if you're riding an ATV in the mountains, uh, scabbard on a horse, or you're just backpacking, you know, backpacking through the woods and got your rifle slung, you're not really using it and you don't want to get it caught or scratched or anything like that. That scope coach, really, really nice. Um, this optic goes for about a about thousand bucks. It's a little bit, little bit over the Night Force SHV. Um, the cons of this scope, the things that I don't like. When you pick this thing up, it is heavy. It is substantially more heavy than the SHV. Um, now the SHV is a 3 to 10 and this is a 3 to 15 with a 52 millimeter objective compared to a 42 millimeter objective. But... <clears throat> I want to say it's in the neighborhood of 25 ounces, which you, you would think SHV is right around 20 ounces and this is 25. You wouldn't think five ounces makes a big difference. It, it does. I'm here to tell you it. It really does. This is, this is a really heavy optic. Um, <clears throat> the reticle. The Hellfire Triplex. It doesn't look like that at all inside of the reticle um, for one thing these posts which it's a it's a obviously it's a German number four design top design um, your vertical bar here in your horizontal bar is probably three to four times thicker than what it looks like in here or on the SIG website anything that you've pretty much seen that's not a direct shot through the scope looks like this the reticle doesn't look like that inside. It's 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 the basic same design, yes, but as far as the thickness of the <clears throat> the reticle, it's it's very deceiving. It's just, it's not even close. These are really really thick. Um, and on your edges, this one has the level plex. So if you guys don't know what that is, uh, it's basically an internal electronic bubble level. Um, if, you, if you've ever had a bubble level mounted on your ring, um, you know that you have to come out of your glass to look at your level, to make sure you're level, then get back into your glass. Um, so, SIG integrated a bubble level into the optic that is electronic. And what it does, <clears throat> there's... And here, that's another thing that I don't like. On the inside, about right here and about right here, on the edges, that there's two big black boxes 
for the level plex um, LEDs and they're they're triangle they're like orange triangle looking uh, one on this side one on this side can't the scope this way a little bit one of them blinks come back to center it goes off you can it the other way a little bit same thing happens it blinks on the opposite side until you come back to dead center sounds like a really good idea um, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you I didn't like it at all I would much if you're gonna have a bubble level on your optic I would rather have it on the ring and this is why um, <clears throat> standard bubble levels that mount onto the rings are typically you have a three degree variance on your on your level so you can be either way three degrees and, and the bubble is going to lead is going to read level or true um, sig they say that the bubble level is within 0 0.5 0 0.5 degrees so if you barely tip it left or you barely tip it right you're going to get these big flashing triangles inside of your reticle um, it's it's very annoying it's um, <clears throat> they like I said they take up a lot of space where the triangles are on your left side in your right side so if you're aiming at a game animal or a target or anything, you have your center red illuminated LED and you have the flashing triangle on your left or the flashing triangle on your right. It's, um, it's, it's really annoying. It's, it's almost like there's too much going on. Um, when I look through my reticle, when I'm, when I'm having to pull up for a quick shot, um, I want something clean and crisp and uncluttered. I don't want a bunch of lights flashing inside of my reticle. That's just not, that's, yeah, it's not what I'm looking for. Um, the field of view. Field of view on this scope, if you go to SIG, there's no information. They don't have anything. So, okay. So you go to Sport Optics. Their website says, I want to say it's 35 feet, maybe 36 feet at 100 yards. Um, and you look through the scope, as soon as you look through the scope at three power, you can tell that that's not, that's not accurate. It's nowhere near 35 feet. If I have to guess, I have several other optics. <clears throat> I would say, I don't know what it is exactly, but just looking at it, eyeballing it, I'm going to say it's around mid twenties, anywhere from 20 feet to maybe 25 feet but but no more it's it's really really constricting the uh the the field of view um so yeah long range probably wouldn't be that big of a deal but kind of what we're talking about in this series um if i had to put a label on the range that we're looking at <clears throat> i would say at a max at a max and this is probably a long max range for what we're looking about 350 yards um, typically in the woods if you get probably a probably better range would be a hundred maybe a hundred and in 50 um, and in majority of the time it's even less than that uh, you're talking 75 to to 100 yards so not really not really something that you that you need um, i've hunted all my life and I've never had a level plex or I've never had uh, a bubble level on any of my hunting rigs. Tactical rigs, different story, different application. Um, <clears throat> but hunting rigs, I just don't hunt at the distances where, yeah, where that's ever been an issue. So, sounds like a cool feature. I'll leave it up to you guys, but I really don't like it at all. Really too much going on inside of the you know, inside of the reticle, uh, you know, you already have a red LED and then you have flashing triangles and, and you no, know, just, just not something I like. Um, moving on, <clears throat> the turrets. This, you have an exposed tactical turret. Don't know if you guys can, can hear the clicks. 
they're they're kind of spongy, but they're not they're not bad. Kind of what you expect for an optic around you know around this price range. Um, <clears throat> your illumination, you have your parallax on your inside dial, which is the side. Um, you're going from what looks like what are we looking at? 20 yards. So we're looking at 20 all the way out to infinity. And then you have your illumination settings on the outside. Now I want to say there's like nine or 10 or something like that. I've not really counted them with an off position in between each intensity level, which is nice. Um, what I don't like about this setup, um, when you're going to turn your parallax, it's really easy. And I, I did it several times. <clears throat> this is kind of really, really difficult. I, I can't even turn it. It's really difficult to turn. It's really, really tight. I don't know if that's going to... There you go. Now we can get us to turn. But I'm putting considerable amount of force to get this thing to turn. A lot more than... Yeah, it's really, really tight. I don't know if this is going to loosen up with use, but right now it's it's... Very, very tight. Um, so when adjusting, adjusting my parallax, um, I inadvertently changed the intensity setting higher or lower, or sometimes even completely off because the in-between settings um, are off while we're shooting. So it's, it's very, it's kind of like they have too much, you know, it looks nice and integrated, you know, you get your parallax here and you move out to this ring and you have your illumination turret, but... <clears throat> If you're trying to use this one, it's, it's really, I mean, you have to really kind of put the edges of your fingers on this one to turn it. And with the edges of your fingers, you can't even turn this thing. It's, I don't know if it's just this particular scope, but um, it's really, really difficult. Um, <clears throat> now the illumination setting, it's really easy. And there's clicks. I don't know if you guys can hear it, you probably can't, but there you go. There's good tactile clicks with just enough force not to accidentally turn it. If you're in the woods, or you're you're rubbing against something. I don't I don't think it would I don't think it would um, would accidentally turn on you. But having these two, the parallax and the illumination, this close together, and with this being so <clears throat> so tight and difficult to turn. Yeah, it, it, it didn't work out at all for me. Um, so, yeah, um, definitely not going to be picking this scope um, for my choice. It's too heavy. Um, the reticle's too thick. It's too, I don't, I don't want to say complicated because it's, it's not complicated. Um, but there's just a little bit too much going on in this reticle that really looks nothing like this as it's portrayed on the box. Um really too much going on when everything's turned on and you're using it the way it's supposed to be used with the level plex on and your illumination running um so yeah it's the glass is really good the illuminated dot is very very fine it's very nice clean sight picture um but with the level plex and the parallax and the illumination together the overall weight of this thing it's really not really doesn't lend itself to what i think uh, most people are are looking for especially with the the exposed turrets yeah it's it's nice if you're if you're shooting prs and if you're constantly dialing then then this is this is the system to go with but if you're deer hunting <clears throat> in the woods bear hogs anything like that you don't have time to turn turrets. You don't have time to spin elevation turrets and look at an app on your phone to tell you how many MOA or mills you need to you need to dial up in order to you know in order to make that. You just you just don't have that. The kind of hunting that I do, I, I just don't have time for that. So it's 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 a feature that I don't I don't really need or want. It overcomplicates things. Um. I think it's more, <clears throat> I think PRS is kind of driving this long range hunting craze and, and PRS is kind of driving the boat on new optics where everybody wants exposed fast turrets. Um, 
a 52 millimeter objective, a built-in level plex. Um, I just think it's things that people don't need, but watching these long range TV shows and, and PRS shooters that are, that are constantly dialing, um, I think people may think that they need these things when they really don't. Um, but yeah, that's my, that's my review of the SIG Whiskey 5. If you guys got any questions, comments, just post them below. Let me know. Mountain Hunter out.